la community. <laughs> no, it's me, it's me. It's not uh, Suzanne talking. How are you? Welcome to Blender today, episode 142. We have so much to see today. We have monkeys, fly monkeys, pink monkeys. We have uh, sequencer updates, performance improvements in the sequencer. We have sculpt improvements. We have geometry nodes. There is a new node in town. There is features to make your geometry nodes life easier. There is so much. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Susana. Because it's the it, it's my old Suzanne that Andy Goralchik printed for me. Look at look at the size of this Suzanne. It's like it, it, it said that it was the the biggest he could print like without having to having the police coming to see if he's mining stuff. It's awesome. Thank you, Andy, for making this. It's awesome. Look, he he also printed a sad coral when we finished the uh, Lamigos, Cagaminandes Lamigos, third episode. So yeah. Super, super nice. Oh, lamp into Suzanne. Like to make, to put a thing inside and make it a lamp? Uh, I don't know how safe is that though. But yeah, super nice. Printing at Suzanne. <laughs> awesome. How's it going? How are you? How's everybody in the chat? Where, where are you watching this from? I'm, uh, I'm uh, super excited because we are in this magical period where 2.92 is out, 2.93 is still in alpha, so it means that we can get uh, we, we can get a whole bunch of new features stuff in it before moving into the beta part of the release, where it's mainly about fixing those features, uh, maybe about uh, maybe adding some improvements, but all around the existing big features that get added in the sense of. In the case of the um, Geometry Nodes project, for example, we were discussing today what would be like the one thing. Well, there are many <laughs> things already, but like the one left uh, thing that is left for Geometry Nodes for 2.93, it's a uh, spreadsheet. That one is not here yet, but it's uh, to come. So hopefully next week should be there next week because next week on Wednesday we have uh, it's Beacon 2. So that's uh, the end. Of of the this magic window so texas bulgaria indian england belarus california denmark korea it's funny how some people mention their country and some measure their uh their their place iraq uk germany netherlands poland everything ah, we are uh, live from the netherlands but i am in uh, i'm from argentina so without further ado let's start let's start mars somebody for mars you know what if you're in mars go to uh, blender.community this is uh, the page where we're gonna be uh, answering the questions so uh, go check it out blender.community here's the chat italy china brazil spain philippines turkey what time is in china right now aruba Oh, so nice. You know what's nice? That we get to celebrate uh, um, International Women's Day today. And this article by 3D Blender magazine, it was super, super nice. You get to see, you get to uh, highlight some of the talents in the community that are often uh, overseen. We, we don't, uh, there's not enough representation, I think, in the Blender community or in the CG community at all. And, um, and and there are many reasons for that. You know, there's many reasons since educations for generations, but also many reasons that um, that we could, you know, um, fight against now, like promote more uh, diversity in the community. Check out the article. I'm gonna actually paste it here in the chat so you can save it for later to read it later. And uh, you also check out all their articles by 3D Blender. They are doing a really, really good job with interviews and, uh, and making blog posts and stuff, such as the cloud. So, okay, this wasn't meant to be the <laughs> advertisement part, but the Blender cloud also is putting out like every week at least one or two um, articles and blog posts about, uh, about um, in general, about uh, the Sprite cloud, uh, Sprite Fright, also about sculpting the Blender Studio is uh, releasing um is doing live streams like uh, julian already did two live streams on sculpting and retopology for uh this little snail uh, character here so we are uh, like the the we are we're surrounded by blender content the blender developers channel today um uh, sergey in the blender developers he was disassembling <laughs> a server 
So today, um, you know, the tasks for developers is not always just fun and games, like go and, uh, and code. There is two live streams for that already. But um, today, one of the tasks that he had to do um, was to go and replace, I think it was a battery or replacing something in the server. So, you know, he has to do it anyway. So he was like, well, wh why don't we just stream it live from the Blender studio? Um, how, how these kind of things are done. And yeah, it's, it's very uh, non-Blender related in a way. I mean, this is the servers that are, um, are helping keeping Blender alive and the Blender Studio. So it is in a way, and sometimes you get to learn new stuff and you get to see a little bit of the other side. Um, and wait until they get to, <laughs> until Sergey gets to soldering. Hashtag Sergey on YouTube. All right, now we get to see. I think I did all the announcements I needed to do. Yeah, let's start. Okay, where, where do we start? There's sculpting stuff, there is geometry nodes, there is Blender sequencer, user interface, grease pencil, compositor. Let's start with a bang. Let's start with geometry nodes. The big, the star of Blender 2.92. However, in 2.92, there's uh, sorry, there are limitations. There are limitations that were planned, planned limitations to to keep the the development scope um, smaller, but also to to not like to try and do a few things, but really well. There are a few um, improvements that are gonna make your life easier. So if you're struggling with, with using geometry nodes in 2.92, maybe it's a good idea to move to 2.93, especially because of uh, this awesome feature that helps you to see what are the attributes available when you have um, when you are when you're working. So you know, well, this node wasn't there, I think, in 2.92, and uh, 2.93 does a uh, a big um, there's a big chunk of development that was done for 2.93 that yeah, revolves around attributes and this one in particular this uh, feature lets you see what are the available attributes because how would you even know that radius was an attribute for points or that uh, material index how would you even know that you had to type material index just to guess what was going to be there so this feature it's super super handy this is the first iteration there are some improvements to be done because um there are what it's so called uh, domains so uh, domains is for example a face an edge and a point a vertex the edges will have different properties than a point right an edge can have the seam property or the crease or bevel weight or different attributes that are than a face a face has different um, attributes like material index that is per face um, a corner has a color for example when you do vertex paint that's a pair corner that's a different domain the um, points also have uh, different uh, values different kinds of attributes so that concept you don't see it really here in this this first um, iteration However, there are more plans where you would see like a drop down, you know, like when you search that you see something like um, like in, in gray, you see one item and then you see the actual value. Well, something like that. And maybe with a type to see if it's a float, if it's a string. Um, well, in this case, they're all right. Yeah. Hmm. No, actually, yeah, you would see it. You will have, will help to see it. Um, or if it's a float, if it's two, yeah, vectors, you name it. How is, how is the chat going? Which mic is that? I think it's the mic that every YouTube ever is using nowadays uh, or forever is the uh, Audio Technica something something. Um, it's, a, it's very like you Google podcast or YouTube video <laughs> uh, microphone and you get this one. You know what else helps to see the to, to for the workflow or working with um, with textures? Well, textures were not available in 2.92, so this is only for 2.93 that you, that it's gonna help you. Um, it's the this button that I think when the first time was added, I personally was like, okay, this is a temporary solution. 
because it's like a shortcut and we don't have that any well we don't we didn't back then and we don't have yet that anywhere else in blender that it's a shortcut to uh, to go to texture so for example if you have a modifier that uses a texture such as this place for example you set a texture and then you have this little icon that is a shortcut but it's very limiting right because what if you are what if you're in different space and you want to go to the textures um, and also there is no button to go back it's like the the back button in the in the, in the mouse doesn't work so yeah, it's like one go one way, but there's no back button. So it was always felt like it was half baked feature, but it kept evolving. And now it even evolved so much that it's available in the nodes. So in a node, in a texture, sample texture node, you're gonna find the button that it will allow you to quickly change the properties context to texture with the texture uh, enabled. So you can, you can tweak it. So yeah, we, I, I think, um, now that we have this option to sync the um, sync, no, say sync. Uh, I'm mixing it with like thing with syncing. Well, sync, synchronize the outliner. Uh, maybe there's an option to synchronize with other editors. Um, now that we have this drop down, maybe oh, it's offset. Hey, pixel perfect police. We need a we need a fix for this. Um, <laughs> Maybe it could be could be improved in that regard, just to to sync or not with the other uh, editors that are uh, that open the the texture. Because I don't know the texture properties. Because I don't know why right now if I have two editors, uh, two properties editor, what happens if I switch to that? Um, do you want to find out? Am I gonna break Blender in the middle of a live stream? Of course I am. So add a texture and then click, ha, it does it here. Um, why? Because it was the first one that I had added. What if I remove it and then, hey, okay. It's not so, so bad. It's a bit smart even. That's why my mom said when I, <laughs> all right, new node alert in geometry nodes new node you already know this one if you're familiar with other areas of blender using nodes uh, especially the vector rotate now um, this one is available as well in geometry nodes what for look at the great work by leon not only made a feature he made a nice screenshot he made a video just so you can see with a super simple uh, example where you can very clearly understand um, the the use of here. So for example, I don't know if you get to see, let me zoom in. Oh, I can't uh, zoom in more than this. But yeah, you here, down, down here, there is a vector rotate. It has the object info, where it's taking the empty as the input, taking the rotation, connecting the rotation, and then the um, vector 001. Ah, is it not available in the... Ah, uh, no, because it's not expanded. Interesting. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, she's using it to map a gradient and the gradient to the geometry. And this is what you see. And then it's using the gradient as a um, emission. So, yeah, super, super handy vector rotate. You can use different objects to very easily map it. It's like one node, two nodes. Very nice. Thank you, Leon, for working on it and for making a video, making life easier to <laughs> when, when explaining these features. Um, also, these, these files, if you provide a file... Yeah, you did. Awesome. In the future, if this feature stops working, this is a great place to come and um, grab that blend file to see if it works or what broke or when it broke. The... I think we're done with the geometry nodes. No, wait, there is more. Huh. But wait, there is more. Normals. It's... It wasn't... No, no, I wanted to make a pun about normals and not being normal to use the normals. Well, never mind. Expose vertex normals, vertex normals as an attribute. This uh, will change everything for some workflows. 
There's an attribute now where you can get the vertex normal of each one in uh, to use with the nodes. So uh, you can use vertex normal, and since the normal vector is stored in vertices only as sketch data, computable for the surrounding faces, the attribute is read only so far. So you can only read it. You can use it to change stuff. So there is no. Um, so for custom normals, it's not, not gonna work, right? Because you can't write. Um, but a write only normal attribute will likely come later. Most likely called corner normal. Interesting. So yeah. Super nice. Thank you, Hans Goody. I think it's time to move into another section. Sculpting. And for this, there is one commit that I'm gonna show you about. But this commit is uh, kind of huge. And you know what? It's so big of a feature that not only the developer made it, Pablo Duarro made it, but he made a video on this channel. So if you're subscribed to the Blender Foundation YouTube channel, the one we are here now, okay, around me, and if you enable the notifications, you probably got notified about a surprise live stream that happened on Friday. And if you haven't already, um, you should go somewhere in this, um, in this, uh, well, actually, people have been reporting about a very like Ask NK, but you know, this video on the Blender YouTube channel, it's made by the guy that made it. So the developer not only made a feature, but he made a live stream of more than one hour, over an hour, where it's just purely um, uh, explaining every feature. And the beginning explains the difference between the new, the, the old um, way of building masks and the new one, and even with graphics. So it explains how it worked in the past, how it works now. He um, explains that thanks to a commit by Brecht, which completely went over, over my, under my radar. Um, like I, I saw this commit, I was like, should I mention it in the live stream? Nah, it's just it's just fine. And then yeah, that's that's when you realize you don't understand what you're talking about. I, in my case, <laughs> because yeah, apparently it was a very big deal, so much so that um, it went from doing these kind of effects on uh, proportional editing to something more smooth. Right? Sounds like a fix. But then. When you get someone brilliant, like Pablo de Barro in this case, he saw it and he's like, hey, this can actually work for so much more. And it's so much more that he went ahead and made a, a whole um, world of features around it. The circle, um, then shapes, then you can manipulate the shapes. Um, the he, ex he explains everything, everything. What I like also is one he mentioned here, he mentioned very clear with this very simple example that, for example, this is how the masks used to uh, work in the past, like expanding. This is, it would go from point A to point B, and it was just like jump directly to there, like just the, find the fastest path. But the new one actually goes around the mesh to find this, um, is this like more correct? It goes around the mesh to find that path. And that gives you super nice results, like in this case, point A to point B instead of going around and then skipping, then it goes our over, like goes around the shape. Super nice, super nice. Especially when you see it, there was another, I saw the whole thing, <laughs> but um, here, for example, if you start painting, then you see that it goes around the shape. And it ends like that. So when you're working with topology, with real topology, is so much better. And then, okay, then he went nuts. It's like, look, you can grab, you can make a circle shape and then grab it around like if it was a mesh, but it's a mask. Um, that that's just that's just crazy. And then you can <laughs> here's like it's like drawing with with primitives, but making a mask. So imagine when like all of this applied already to. It's already applied to sculpting, but when it's applied to painting and stuff, that will be just, just crazy. Um, you can expand on existing masks, you can mold the mask, you can do uh, face sets, um, you can manipulate the face sets like that, and then like 
this part is nice. It starts moving it and then, okay, then I just uh, shrink the, um, here, the face set and then move it around again. Click. So it's like, <laughs> so, so flexible, so organic, like, this is amazing. And then he makes a demo here with fingers and you should watch the whole thing. There is, uh, um, when, when Pablo was making this, he was asking like, hey, should I look at the chat all the time and answer questions or should I do it uh, at the end? And I think with so much material, I, I, I suggested like, no, maybe try, not, try to show all the features and then answer questions at the end. But hey, so he went ahead and did it. It's one hour and 15 without even answering many questions. It's just like, boom, explaining everything. So super grateful that he went and took the time um, must have taken a lot of time to to work on this, but so worth it. So worth it. Like Among Us, <laughs> there was Among Us face shape. Um, yeah, and then with textures, and then he even shows some. Ah, then he makes the mel the <laughs> the watermelon example, but I'm not gonna spoil that part. Go watch it. It's just awesome. The okay, and that's it with the sculpt. I mean, what what am I gonna show you <laughs> here in the commit log? You have the shortcuts that he's using, some of them. Some of the shortcuts may change. They're still not um, not um, written on in stone, on stone. But uh, but yeah, super exciting times for sculpting. What else? I think we are done with the sculpting. Let's move into. Okay, I have a little of a of a break here for performance. Let's talk about. Performance. So, in the performance uh, uh, department, booleans, non manifold, to be precise, non manifold exact boolean improvement. How much? Well, there is a, um, there is a setting that you can get to work on, to, to make when you have a mesh with holes. Um, there is a setting that you can turn uh, on for like to be very precise to work properly the exact one the thing is uh, most of the time or maybe uh, depends on your workflow but but it could happen that most of the time you don't even have that kind of meshes when you are doing exact uh, booleans so there was a speed up that could be done there to being able to disable this check and make things faster and that's what it was done here so in a mesh with 1.2 million triangles the setting this setting off went from 90 seconds to 10 seconds 10 seconds super cool so yeah improvements improvements let's see and uh, next well since we are talking about improvement let's switch topics but not so much so halfway um Switching topics. I'm gonna have another mate. How's the chat going? The power of double pe Pablo. Is a pink overlay comparable to a weight map painting layer? No, weight map has a value per uh, per vertex. But whereas a face set, those pink colors that you saw, a face set is like either or not. It's like it belongs or it doesn't belong to one um, to one mesh. <laughs> oh, alrighty, Peter. Yes, I said alrighty. Did I say that? Um, hashtag don't stay home. Uh, yeah, no, don't listen to that uh, person. I'd rather do so we can enjoy the summer in the northern hemisphere or the winter in the southern hemisphere. Also, that doesn't apply to everywhere in the world, in different places. Did you now? And I said it. Yes, thank you for reminding me, Peter. And checking the comments in the in the chat. Okay, so I said performance, and I mean performance. Like one of the best improvements in performance in the sequence editor is to it's on something that you do all the time, which is scrubbing. Scrubbing. What is scrubbing? Not like scrubbing your back. It's scrubbing performance. So when you open, uh, when you drop a file and you click and drag around, do that that. That is now faster. It's much faster. So this is is in a series of uh, of of 
improvements that are coming to the sequencer that I really hope we can make it to 2.93 because 2.93 is an LTS um, release which means that people might use it for longer it might be the one that people if so if you want to do it with something with the geometry nodes and keep it longer on a production then maybe you should switch to 2.93 but again this uh, 2.0 LTS thing it's it's tricky I wouldn't jump into an LTS release the same day of the release right because there is there I mean an LTS release the day it's released it's just as good as the previous release or the one before because um, yeah the recycles is still every four months but an LTS release gets fixes after the the four months uh, process so yeah 1.5 times faster seeking on a random frame like click 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 anywhere in a sample file with 30 frame and gop length gop length so yeah this is actually super super nice there is uh, uh, based on the tests apparently there is no um shouldn't be any here like sebastian was testing it and he said he tested it with a, in a movie from tears of steel and uh, it's some, some tea, yeah, they wouldn't go off sync, so it seems to be fine. Um, yeah, super nice. Thank you, Richard, for working on it. Thank you, Sergey, for reviewing. Uh, don't forget about the credit of people reviewing patches. This post, this fix on the FFmpeg, on the video sequence editor, gets me really excited because it comes after a few other refactor um, changes, which for the end user, for like your everyday use, you may not notice anything. Um, they are mainly just like internal changes, but these are good things, you know, when there are li these little refactors, um, or not so little sometimes, the... Um, this means that there is something else, you know, that the, the code is being cleaned up to for a, for a bigger change or for performance or for just making it more readable so other people can jump in and uh, help. So yeah, in this case, another refactor for meta operators. And I don't know if I should mention here, but yeah, just, just in case, I mean, it's, uh, it's I do things that are not implemented yet. I don't show things that are on a branch but this is just too exciting. This is on a branch. So there are two changes that are on a branch that get me really excited. Um, one, if it loads, and in the meantime, let's load the other one. So simplify proxy settings to make things a lot easier, a lot, sound, a lot simpler. Then this other one, automatic proxy building. So this is on a branch again is unpublished is not uh, there yet but this automatic proxy building means that uh, when you drop a file it would make a proxy so a lower resolution version of your video of your strips automatically so you don't have to do it in the background so if you have enough disk space maybe that that's one side or downside is that it uses it has to store that somewhere right um, but it, uh, as a return you get fast scrubbing and editing and everything so yeah that was a spoiler alert though let's go into something that is here and it exists so speaking of grease pencil in the chat can you shape key with grease pencil no not yet but these other features that there's a refactor that i was actually happened a few weeks ago and i didn't include it in uh, blender today's um, live stream notes because i was waiting for other changes to see maybe the, the, there was a video but i think now we can we can go through the changes it's been a few weeks but it's uh it's it's on master already it's in the version that you're using if you use 2.93 alpha the um refactor is in the interpolate tools so there is a bunch of changes in one commit for example the interpolate um tool is now a tool it's not an operator so it, it's gonna appear on the sidebar and it has its own um, uh, its own settings so that's the benefits of having as a tool then the parameters have been moved to the top bar like with any other tool the popover has been removed so it's more uh, consistent with the rest then the sequence interpolate sequence now has a redo panel so you can tweak the settings after uh, doing an interpolate sequence 
then uh, interpolate tools allows you to select strokes by pairs by pair 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 this allows to interpolate any stroke with any stroke and not as before that it was only possible in the drawing order yeah this means better um, interpolation basically you can choose two strokes and then do it new option to flip strokes is an auto auto automatic option to, sli to flip the strokes in case the direction got wrong you can just flip it and it should be fine you can interpolate again if a previous keyframe exists before it was only possible to it was impossible to imp interpolate two times in the same frame and this made impossible to do the interpolation by groups of frames then uh, back fixes cleanups and it should everything be much better overall so yeah super nice you know what else is nice it's improvements in the workflow so this one is um is more of a psa a public service announcement there is a change in the way the um, drawing on keyframes work with grease pencil so what happens this is a change um there is there was a video i think it was a video published by pepeland let's tweet i always go to pepeland but um I remember his nickname but yeah he made a video here um no that's a new one a video here this one important notice how um but um but um but um it's a video that made um and daniel martinez lara about the new way of working of this tool so Previously, when you had the... Well, you can just watch the video, but previously, basically, when uh, you had the auto keyframe on, um, you would... Um, basically, before... Um, before, basically, if you were painting anywhere, uh, if you had a keyframe and you're painting anywhere, let's see if I have it here. So if you have a keyframe and then you paint outside of that of that frame, it would make a new drawing. So you will lose the way it would work in the back. You will lose your your drawing basically. So that was a bit. Um, or if you didn't have the auto keyframe on, then you would lose what you were painting because it was not in the exact frame. Now that has changed and is a big change in the workflow. So you have to remember how it works but it's a great improvement because now it means that you you don't need to be in the exact frame to paint on that keyframe so yeah just watch this video by uh, i can actually paste the link here by daniel martinez lara pebland he explains it much better oh and she's using the cool um, frame current frame change From the Chris Pencil tool, Adam. Done. Adam, Adam, Adam. <laughs> Wanna try what's new in the compositor or more the cryptomat part of the compositor. So in the past the cryptomat um, metadata would only be read from the render result. So you had to render to see the um, to, to, to be to get access to the cryptomat metadata not anymore now when you are um, when you are loading the when you are loading for example the frame as a image as an exr image the metadata will be available there so you can render and do um, cryptomat compositing after the after the case so very handy as well to separate you know you don't it's a good idea if you're going to be serious about compositing is not to do it all in one in the same blend file so you do the lighting and rendering and then compositing and then speed out the the frame because if you want to make some changes to the compositing then you have to re-render everything it's the same kind of the same concept why it's not a good idea if you're rendering an animation to render as mov file or mp4 but to render individual images it's a similar concept better to render with exrs and then uh, two exrs and then do the compositing in a separate blend file or uh, scene 
to just do the compositing there. All right. Let's let's work. Somebody is mentioned script crypto mat still not working in Fusion. Um, report to. Oh, I don't know if it's Blender or if it's Fusion. Um, report to both. Go to developer that uh, Black Magic design. No, I don't know if they have a, a website, but yes. Let's uh, see what it's. Okay, I have a few more things. You know, Eevee. We haven't talked about Eevee in so long. And this contribution comes from the community. Yes, the community. So, Mikael, Mikael, the username is down here. Mikael KTD Fly. He made it, so he fixed. It's a fix, actually. Imagine a developer from the community who's actually fixing stuff, not making flashy new things. It's a fix for light linking, uh, leaking. Not, not light linking, I wish. That wouldn't be a fix, that would be a feature. A feature, feature, feature. feature. Fix lighting leak between object and different depths. Let's see a picture. So, have you ever had this issue where here, for example, where it says 215? Eevee used to render like this, where there is a bright spot, it would it would leak. So instead of it, like the specular would be weird, and these edges, for example, would be just too blurry. Well, not anymore. In the new fix version. Not anymore, look at these nice, sharp edges. Super clean. So, I mean, I would say that if you have rendered any animation that it has these bright spots in the past, just give it a try. Re-render it again with the new Eevee, just, just to see the differences, because uh, it, it looks like a pretty big, pretty big deal. I think it is a pretty big deal. Um, cycles. For comparison, now they are even closer. Eevee, cycles, all Eevee. More blurry. Although it has its charm. <laughs> the blur has its charm, you know? When the compositor was added in Blender back in 2005, um, everybody was doing glow effects because there was one of the few notes available. And, uh, you know, it's like he had that effect. It's not Bloom, Peter asks. No, it's not Bloom actually. You can you can see that it's not uh, it's not Bloom. It's it's an actual uh, bright spot, and that is light is leak is leaking light. So yeah, I think if you, if you watch like the Lord of the Rings, there are many films uh, in that era that also have a bit too much glow, and uh, even series TV series. I don't know. It was an effect of the times. You know what else is an effect now? Okay, no, no segue here. I'm trying to pull a uh, a Linus uh, segue. The section. Now, if I can click on the right link, it's user interface improvements. Okay, this one it's um, an improvement to search to fuzzy search. The search that um, gives you results. Uh, even if you mistype something that it should uh, give you better results and here this one um, I never noticed but Apparently when you were writing for example select It would try and match uh, long words like selected first like it would also match select but it go with la long longer words first than uh, than previously or if you were searching for texture or text it will match with texture first and then text. Not anymore. That has been fixed. Thanks to Jack Luke. He made it so if you write select, match with select first and then with selected. The same with text. First match text, everything that has to do with text and then go with texture. So yeah, super little quality of life improvements that should make uh, finding things easier in Blender. You know what else is great to find? Answers to why things don't work. Like error messages. Why my nodes are not working. Well, we had this feature, um, the node error messages, a uh, few, one week, two weeks ago. But now they're also available for translation. So this is more than a feature 
announcement but more of a announcement to people working on translations that you can now um, go ahead and translate those error not note error messages so they can be in blender 2.93 hopefully the last but not least improvement is that there are new presets for high frame rate video um, yeah there are a few more presets which ones 120 and 240 so yeah did you know that basically that <laughs> that, that these presets are just python files they're really just python files that have a yeah just a bunch of import wpi and then the settings so you can make your own presets and put them here in the in the presets uh, frame rate folder and um actually i think we missed one frame rate for 12 frames per second because um there is none you have to go you have to type it manually and it's very common if you do um to the animation stop motion key mesh um so i think we should have a one at 12 frames per second as well. I should add it. Um, and that's it. That is it or not? Well, little mention of add-ons. The add-ons section today has um, one is for UVs. Have you ever thought of that UV in Blender sucks? Well, it's not really sucks. I mean, he has its limitations, but there are tools that help that and there are add-ons that are even in Blender built in uh, Like Magic UV for example, this um, Magic UV add-on now got a release 6.5 has been updated So you should be able to use it from within Blender um, It should just, should just update and it includes for texture projection you can now uh, have options for select uh, scaling rotation translation Select UV now allows you, it zooms into selected UV feature and add option for same polygon threshold, selection method, sync mesh selection. Hey, that's nice. Um, UV inspection, same polygon threshold and display view 3D. What is this? So it will display, you click on it and um, I hope it's not named like that in the user interface. Where, what is the policy to go and change the interface of add-ons to make them more consistent? Um, but yeah, Mirror UV now has um, add option, uh, a new option for origin and UV W for force access and fix bugs. Super nice. So thank you, Nari, for working on it. And that is all. Well, uh, if you're an add-on developer, so this is very niche feature. If you're an add-on developer, there is this patch by Patrick Bush that uh, made it so the reset view is available uh, for add-ons. So they can also use it. Uh, yeah, it's not for a lot of people, but if you're using curves in your add-on, this might come in handy. And that is all. I think I'm wrapping up the section. Yes. Oof. Okay, I have seven minutes. No, I'm, no, I'm kidding. I have a bit more because I, I started a bit late because of the drilling where's the accent is he from Argentina yes I'm drinking mate that makes me uh, South American at least and uh, I'm from Argentina I'm from Patagonia I had an Argentinian flag even here I think I don't know if you can see it no oh yeah down there anyway Questions. That was an excuse for me to drink mate and have a and, and breathe a little bit. Kosanagi asks for the first question. Hi Pablo, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I hope you're also doing pretty well. Can you tell more about Pablo Alvaro Scott Branch? I'm a little bit afraid of the, about this. I have the impression that if everyone in, works on a branch, it goes more slowly instead of working together. Does that mean that the last experimental sculpting tool will no longer be on the daily builds? It seems weird to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Don't be alarmed. The branch where uh, Pablo was working is actually the other way around. Um, it, it's okay to, to feel afraid about it. It's understandable. But the um, there are times in development where master, like the main branch, it's either closed for new features 
or also it's maybe not the best time to merge big changes it's better to like work them out polish them out in a separate branch and then merge them um, when they are more ready and that is what we saw in at the beginning of the show the sculpt expand feature that was all developed in a branch and now is in master so it's i, I think it's in the case of uh, pablo de barros um, work better but also i mean i know pablo de barros is very high profile that's why people are worried about this but many other works um features work uh, are made in branches it's not the first time it happens actually geometry nodes was a branch there is still branches for like the spreadsheet still in a branch um it's it's very common uh no common practice so don't worry it's all fine steve 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 <laughs> i'm happy to see hi by the way i'm kidding um I'm happy to finally see geometry nodes, but would like to hear more about work being done to improve poly handling performance in Blender. Geometry nodes will be limited if it's easy to bog down Blender with medium to heavy scenes. Well, um, poly handling performance, there are many levels of, of handling um, polygons, that are like the performance of ha handling polygons, you know, there is edit mode has pretty much nothing to do with uh, the way you see in the viewport instances for example and geometry nodes for the time being it's working with instances unless you add a modifier after it after the geometry nodes that convert them into real mesh real um, uh, instances so yeah it's a um, it's in the agenda performance is always in the agenda today we saw a few uh, performance improvements but yeah um, Developers are aware, do not worry. Next question by Mille Porte. Hi Pablo. About geometry nodes, spawn more transformation nodes. I can instance new geometry to use in Boolean operations, but I can't see it, nor I can see its appearance in some way. As a bounding box, for example, to position the new geometry correctly, will there be an option for that? Um, we were talking about the option or yeah it's an option or it's a it's a new concept of connecting a node or an attribute to a tool i know it's kind of weird it's like a special mode for using tools that are linked to nodes it's an idea that ton has for for geometry nodes um, for example, in in the Sprite Fried film, you have a you could have a tool for um, for spreading mushrooms, and then another one for trees, and another one for um, grass, flowers. So you have tools for those dedicated, you know, um, nodes to control the attribute of a node. Basically, you're painting with a with a tool. So yeah. Um, then, about these cycles, I didn't have an idea about how it's actually fast and advanced. One of the main features are light groups are... <laughs> come on, light groups are available everywhere too. They are a... They're a patch. There was a patch. It, it's in developer.blender.org. It's not only e-cycles. Actually, in uh, Graphical, you're gonna find the uh, Bone Master um, tool. That Bone Studio that has light groups. That has scrambling distance, dither, uh, uh, sol noise, nano VDB. Well, this is actually already in master, but yeah, light groups are available in other. It's a patch that was available in which is, uh, it was developed by uh, Lucas Togner, even. There is even a video using Bone Studio. Yeah, from 2019. <laughs> yeah, it's a patch has been around for a while. Um, why Cycles is so fast? In Cycles is open source, I'm wondering why nobody has still developed those kind of optimizations. Well, actually, many of the patches that made um, this uh, add-on fast, this, this uh, version of Cycles fast, they are available in developer.blender.org, but some of them there are, like here, um, but some of them are either not stable enough or are not of uh, good quality enough to go in Blender. Um, they are... They can be in, make it inconsistent with other uh, 
graphics cards, for example, if it's only GPU based but not CPU. Um, the idea of Blender, remember that it has to work with the widest range of graphics cards and hardware, right? It's not fair to do a feature that only works in specific uh, cases. Um, well, you, I mean, you could say that Optics and Nvidia, but they develop that feature. So in that case, it's not making <clears throat> AMD graphics cards lower. It's just making those faster. So yeah, there is a trade-off between stability and also I don't know how this uh, this version works with um, animation, for example. And Blender is an animation software, so uh, yeah. I never tried it actually. I don't know why people don't just put it out there, right? It's open source, so you should be able to uh, to if you have it, just put it up. Silla S uh, says, Silas, Silas. Hello, are there any plans for Blender community for this thingy? Or any plans to use a new algorithm for cloth? Uh, Viva's implementation for fast cloth and software simulation proposal. The current algorithm used in Blender is almost getting quite old, I mean very old. Viva che implementation for fast cloth. Okay, so kind of a long... Um, Read is a is about a paper for cloth simulation. Um, any plans to use a new algorithm for cloth? Not that I know at the moment. Uh, can you ask Sebas if he had working on the uh, NPM solver? When was this? Ah, yeah, he was working on it. Um, it's a new Mataflow plugin. No, actually, I haven't haven't seen it. I I could ask him. It's too bad uh, we're not at the studio anymore. But yeah. Oh, I lost the... well, I refreshed the patch. Alright, and next... oops. Oh, I lost the likes, too. Like, 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 like. Um, you can also ask, right? You could tweet. Um, if you have Twitter, maybe you can just ask. I mean... Next question. Hi Pablo. Uh, is there a way to set render settings per view layer? For example, if I want to always render one view layer with EV and another with cycles at 50% resolution and another one with mo without motion blur. Um, there are no view layer overrides yet. It was one of the, um, the plans that were, you know, back in the day, but uh, for the time being you cannot do it. You have to use different scenes so a scene in blender is like a blend file it's like a completely different blend file you can have a whole movie in one blend file if each scene was a different scene <laughs> or shot um, render resolution and motion blur they are linked to the scene so far so yeah next uh, question uh, actually, I think I managed to answer all of the ones here on the page. Hello, Pablo. Not a question. I think that its suggestion is too good to be ignored. Let's check it out. Right-click, select um, wireframe modifier behavior. Handy to have an option and an angle option for my wireframe. Yes. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, I don't know. I uh, this yeah this this should be brought up. Well, come on, it was 19 hours ago. 19 hours. Like, this is super recent and already, but I have, I gave it my live vote. So hopefully people are gonna see it. Hopefully when maybe this becomes a node, we could do it with notes. With notes stuff. Um, when thinking about modifier settings, it's also good to, from now on, to think about it in terms of notes, if it's possible already or what would take? Which nodes will take to maybe make something similar to that? Hive mind. Oh, hive mind though. With, with friends. Hello, hive minds. How are you? I hope you're doing great. Are we using the multi? Uh, we are using the multi-user add-on, and it's amazing. But for better collaboration and virtual management, we're looking for a Git for blend files. It seems like the Blender Studio use subversion. That is correct. How's it done there? If you could point us to a tutorial or something, you would be even more awesome. Um, 
I don't know about a tutorial, it's really, really simple. Subversion is, is, is used for um, forever. It's, it's like um, maybe on the cloud, uh, on the cloud, maybe we have a document, but it's really, really simple. You just, it's like Git, you, um, but with binaries. So you just add a SVN add a file, uh, SVN commit. No, I think you can't add, you just commit. You just commit stuff, yeah. You can uh, revert, that's one thing that is easier. Um, you can have branches, so maybe we have a video? No. SVN? SVN repository. Mm, production files? No, we don't have a video about it. Maybe that's a good fun, I don't know how fun, but maybe it's a good video for the cloud team to make. Um, Augusto asks, Hi Paulo, only one question today. Hey, hey, and there is another question. Ah, no, it was a proposal. Uh, about geometry nodes. Is it possible to control the scale of the particles using the weight paint? E yes, yeah. I tried to do that last night and failed because my math and art skills are not... I don't think you need math. I think it's more logic here. Um, I think you can, because weight paint is just a value per point. So if you use that and um, with yeah to control the scale of a point, there is point scale by the way, um, like scale point scale. So if you just as a as a factor, you just use the yeah the weight the the, the weight paint weight paint is just a attribute. So it's just an attribute like any other. You should be able to use it. Um, actually. You can just use, you can just search. So if an, well, I don't, I'm not gonna do it right now, but if you have, uh, let's quickly make a weight vertex group, it should show up here, right? Or not? Why is it not? Ah, because it's not, a, ah, because it's not connected, duh. Pablo, there. And then, there, group. So you should be able to use it just like this. Um, maybe you want to do an operation to add or multiply instead. Um, so many times we think it's math, but it's just just logic. Um, or also just because we have a lot of nodes. So just just search. Usually just search for like scale. Uh, in this case, I searched for scale and I found the point scale node. Um, yeah. Next, only the last three questions. Hello Pablo, I love Blender and all its potential. I was wondering if vertical production, a topic at the Blender Foundation. Blender has a real-time nature and full production pipeline. It feels like a perfect fit. What I think is missing is a real-time data input and communication. Do you know something like that? Like a video and audio in Blender? How is Vulkan coming along? Can we help? Is there anything that can be crowdsourced? Wow, can you... like? Are you involved with this? Um, it would be I mean, if you have experience with it, just jump in the Blender dot Blender chat, Blender the coders, Blender developers, and Blender coders, Blender dash coders channel, and uh, offer your help. Um, Vulkan, I'm not sure at the moment. I know that there is a new blog post coming in the code blog soon about uh, about EV that should show up this week. I have to review it. <laughs> I, don't have to forget, I'm gonna make a note about blog. Always keep a pen and pen, a uh, paper next to your mm, computer. Um, but yeah, um, real-time data input and communication, that is what Ton calls the interaction, interactive mode, and it's in the plans sometime. There is no team assigned to it yet, but I would say is within the next uh, few years, up to five, I would say. Mm, Datative, Datadiv. Hey, Pablo and community, is it planned to add a better automated retopology tools like this new plugin does for uh, ZBrush called Easy Remesher? Allows you to paint the mind topology flow you want onto the mesh. Um, there is a I don't know about this automatic topology tool that you mentioned um, there is a open source version of a of a quad remesher but I don't think it's 
that automated as in this one you mentioned um, maybe also keep in mind that these tools are like there's a, like a, either a team or very dedicated people that there's probably like a Pablo Dovaro or two dedicated to this one tool that is this one thing and uh, no we don't we don't fortunately we don't have that in, in blender yet um, the last question oh more questions um, there is no mirror copy function for vertex groups there is symmetrize I don't know if it works the way you want though and the last question hey Pablo what do you think about this proposal uh, it's about having a root operation in the math node isn't there one already not, a, not as a node but uh, I think they're like it should be should be easy I mean if it's already existing another node it should be yeah should be there all right time to call it a day I'm running off out of voice I wanted to show you actually I wanted to get your to gather your feedback on a uh, <laughs> on a, a design uh, for the for the new profile page of the new um, the new blender community website um, having the profile the blender today right click select and graphical as separate inputs um, like having the uh, how positive or or not a an idea is um, more emphasis on which the operating system is I see that people keep adding the name Windows or Mac or Linux to the name of the build and that's because it, it's because the the operating system is not big enough so it should be um, and then also uh, yeah an activity page something like uh, you see if the person has commented, liked, voted, or posted, and uh, yeah, social links and stuff. These are just some designs I've been uh, working on for the new Blender Community website, and that is all. Okay. All right, we made it. We made it, Susana. We made it. Somebody pointed out today that Susan's nose is like a heart have you noticed before it's like a tiny little heart i think i never noticed so cute it's time to wrap it up it's been a good week i managed to answer all the questions that were at the time of when i loaded the page at least on blender community so i'm pretty glad about that i hope you had fun i did it's been a week full of features next week we might see a new editor coming into town hopefully um, we also might see some video sequencer improvements uh, it's hard to tell with open source but it's always at least we know that every week there is something to look forward to and that is that's awesome and you are awesome for staying until the end for watching the whole thing and for sharing or liking this video for commenting for anything uh, that promotes these sharing feeling this uh, philosophy of making and sharing making and sharing you know that's if you, if you can leave something good to the to the world be it something creative and with good intentions good philosophy that is all for this week i'm gonna close it with a little bit of style as we do often in five four three two and one <laughs> It goes with everything. Gile. Street Fighter. I hope we don't get <laughs> some copyright complaints one day. <laughs> See you next week. Same place, same time for more Blender Today Live. Bye-bye.